Let's skate out. <clears throat> A lot of deviates today. Just wait for a minute. Someone might come on. Can't always come on, but you can say hi. If anyone comes on, got lots of lots of interesting stuff today. John Tummy Heary going to be talking about David Tummy Heary Raweary Waititi they're all family all in the family you have to um, you know I wonder to myself when you think about Parliament that New Zealand taxpayers are paying to up not only but up to around two hi there's Linda good I've got one long as I've got one I'm happy New Zealand taxpayers are paying around 200 up to two hundred thousand dollars a year high neck for people in Parliament we're paying a lot of money for people in Parliament and you expect a certain standard and the people that are in our parliament that are changing our laws they want to you know there's a lot going on and and they want to get they already got out our our 1689 bill of rights that protected our free speech all of this COVID 19 things the abortions none of it would have been able to be done if we still had our uh, 1689 Bill of Rights and uh, the uh, Helen Clark gov a succession of governments Helen Clark John Key David Lang um, a couple of others there they all got together and they're there from what I'm tracing it all comes back to this Polynesian society and the, the characters now we did we did the characters already of um, of the Adurns. So everybody can remember the Adurn family. So we've done um, Jacinda Adurn, Ian Adurn, Ross Adurn, uh, and uh, Vincent Halak. And that's all the deviates of the Adurn family, although they keep fairly clean. There's no flies on them. But if you look at all the, the people around them, there's, yes, share to groups. We'd love to get some groups in here. Good idea. It's going to be really interesting today. Today we've got rapists, child rapists. We've got murderers. We've got judges, all sorts of stuff going on today. And we've, we've done, we did the, um, we did the Chinese group. This is the Chinese group. Now in the Chinese group, we've got um, CCP spies. We've got um, people that paid hundreds of thousands Oh, oh! He, I don't think he meant it like that, Linda. I think what he meant was um, if we share to some groups and try and get a few more people to 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 listen is what he meant. And I think he meant it nicely. Okay, don't worry, Linda. Don't worry. Okay, calm down, everybody. And. Um, so these people here, we had the CCP spies and all of those, 
and then we did the Adern's, and uh, and then we did. It's going to be. I want you to really listen because Russell M. Nelson and uh, his children here, which were um, uh, Richard Miles and Brenda Miles, and they used to have the kitty touching part, the touchy feely parties, and they. Um, Surprisingly enough, their uh, court cases were dismissed by the judge. And today I'm going to show you about how the, all of these Freemason demolays seem to have judges in their families and judges in their congregations and that kind of thing. So this is the um, Russell M. Nelson and his... Um, uh, rape and, and sexual abuse of children. Oh, okay. Oh, we should watch Nick because um, we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about John today, and I think it's going to be really interesting for you. But anyway, you come back later if you want to, Nick. Um, Nick's a, a great friend, and he's. Um, always uh, supporting uh, me and uh, he understands what I've been talking about so he's a good friend well Facebook friend I've never actually met him but Facebook friend a friend to the Maori Pian site anyway so we're going to be talking about John today and these are uh, these uh, these people so I'm going to tell you about this guy here who's called David Tamahiri. And David Tamahiri is the brother of John Tamahiri. Now, we, we can't say that just because one family member does something that it's the fault of the other family member. We can't say that. But what we can say is sometimes when one family member does a lot of things wrong. As you see from the post today, sometimes another family member might give them a helping hand through the judicial system. You wonder. So we're going to show a bit about that today. So this is David Tamahiri, and I want to tell you about him. Now, David Tamahiri. When he, this is his track record. When he was 18 years old, he killed a lady called Mary Barcham. And he did that by hitting her on the head with a gun butt. Now, it might be that, I mean, he got charged with manslaughter, but you know, when when you hit someone on the head with a gun butt, it has to be pretty damn hard and usually more than one time for it to kill a person. But David Tamahiri managed to get away with manslaughter. Now, that was in 1972, all right? I just want you to really understand about, before you hear about, the whining of this guy, the whining and whinging, how he's saying, you know, I'm just an innocent guy that didn't do anything really wrong, really, and I want to be pardoned. He's looking for a pardon. But I want you to understand the background of this guy. He's not as innocent as what he's making out. So he killed this girl, young woman. She was 23. He killed her, and he went to prison. And he got out of prison. So he's, he's went in and he's come out. Now, in 1986, no, in 1985, he broke into the home of a 62-year-old woman, 62 years old, and he raped her. Just you drink that in for a minute. This guy 
in 1985, so 1972, he killed Mary Barcham. And then eight, eight years, what's eight plus five? 13 years later, so he didn't even do 13 years for that murder, manslaughter it's called. <laughs> in 13 years later, he breaks into the house of a 62-year-old woman and he raped her. Now that's horrendous, absolutely and utterly horrendous, but it doesn't end there. They didn't catch him. He was caught for that in 1992. Later, I don't know, they must have done some DNA or something, but he didn't get actually prosecuted for that until 1992, which was seven years later. But it doesn't end there on little Mr. Innocent David Tamahiri that he's filed to Jacinda Ardern for a pardon. These are the people that she's hanging out with. No flies on her though. <laughs> now in 1986, he broke into another woman's house and they said sexually violated, but you know, raped. Sexually violated, sometimes that can come under the series of he used objects to violate, but I don't know the force, a lot of it's hidden. But anyway, he threatened to kill her and he raped and violated a woman, a 47 year old woman over a six hour period. So he held her for six hours and he raped her and he violated her and he still didn't get caught. You know what happened? They, he did get actually caught and they let this fucker out on bail for raping a 47 year old woman over six hours and they let him out on bail. Can you believe that? John Tamahiri's brother. And then <laughs> he went and he escaped bail and he went on the run and he went and lived in some bush area around the Coromandel there. And he lived in the bush for three years and he said, oh, I'm going back to my Maori roots. Well, look at him. He's not you know, the Maori should just disown him. The New Zealand Maori should say, look at him. He's not a fucking Maori, he's white. He is, he's white. You know, he, the, the New Zealand Maori, why do you let people like this claim Maoridom? Why do you? So he hid out in the bush and he said, I'm living, you know, they, these guys, when they do these kinds of things, they always latch on. And this is why I get so upset with these things of because I'm Maori, I can have different things. Because people that shouldn't be claiming to be Maori are gaining advantage. And so he rapes these two women, 47 years old for six hours and 62 years old, he rapes them runs off to the bush and reclaims his maori dim, refines his, his Maori roots. And he lives in the bush for three years. I better get going, the video is going to be long. And anyway, in 1989, he was found. And when they found him, he'd been hiding in the bush for three years. When they found him, He's, when they found him, he said, what had happened was, um, when they found him, he said that he'd been driving around in this car, and this car belonged to Heidi Pakonan and Urban Hoglan, and they had been missing for several years, for a couple of years. And um, he, when they f uh, found him, the car that he had 
belonged to them and he had uh, driven some tourists up to Auckland and he left the car at the train station and when he was arrested for these rapes that he had committed and they caught him, the tourists that he had taken uh, up to the up to the North Island there, they recognised the car and they recognised him, you see. And when he was arrested, he said to the police, he said, oh, this is what he reckons, this rapist. He's already a rapist and a murderer. And he reckoned that he just found their car near the bush where he was staying and it was full of their things, he reckoned. And he drove the car, the tourists, up to Auckland in the car that he found and he reckoned that he didn't see either of these two people but he just stumbled upon their car and he just um, decided to break into the car and drive it up to Auckland and sell all their belongings. This is what the rapist of a 62 year old woman and the rapist of a 47 year old woman and the manslaughter or possibly even murder, murderer of another young 23 year old woman. He's saying that he just stumbled on their car and he never saw them and he got all their belongings. This is what he reckoned. Now, he, he, it turns out that he was prosecuted for the murder of those two. So, um, one of the major, there were three, now the bodies weren't found and there were three witnesses, A, B and C. Now, witness A was a called, man called Stephen Kappa. Now, here's witness B, oh, sorry, witness B. Witness B was a guy called Stephen Kappa. And Stephen Kappa said that he was in the same prison block with Tamahiri. But when you go and research Stephen Kappa, his record has been wiped clean. So he might be in some kind of a witness protection thing or something. So let's just leave that at that. He's gone. We ain't going to get nothing on him. But another one of the witnesses was called, was Witness A. Now, Witness A, well, these are all the people in the prison. These are the people that Stephen, uh, Stephen was hanging out with. Now, Witness A, he had been charged previously. He was in the prison for the manslaughter of his partner and he was in the prison for smuggling heroin. His whereabouts are currently unknown. But this guy called Arthur Taylor that's fighting for Stephen Tam Tamahiri, uh, is it for David Tamahiri, this guy Arthur that's fighting for David Tamahiri, he put out a warning to, um, to Witness A and he said, hey, Witness A, we don't know where you are. You might be in Fiji. We don't know where you are, but if we find out where, where you are, we're coming for you. Now, why would he put out a warning like that? Why are they so scared of Witness A coming back? Is that what they're scared of? I mean, these all guys are criminals, murderers and rapists. Now, Witness A also went as a witness to help convict Woody Wellington, Woody Wellington Wah, and William Cullen. They were prosecuted for the murder of hotelier Rex Bow. Now, you can go and research them. You ain't going to find nothing. It's all been wiped clear, okay? But witness A was also a witness against them. So witness and witness A was charged with manslaughter and heroin smuggling. But you can't find witness A, his name. There's nothing on him as well. However, witness C. Witness C is a man called Robert Conchi Harris. Now, oh, Robert Conchi Harris 
is a double murderer sex offender. Now, where is he? Here he is. Robert Conchi Harris. It, it doesn't matter that I'm showing it. His face is everywhere. So this guy here is, you know, probably in witness. He's in protection, I suppose. So he came forward. Now, he is a double murderer and sex offender. He killed his cousin, Martin Crosley, and his partner, Carol, his cousin's partner, Carol Pye. And he shot them both. He shot them both in the back of the head. He's also, when he was released, oh, why would he be released from prison? I can help. He was released from prison, and on the same day that he was released, he was charged back again for indecent assault on a young girl on the same day. But, you know, there's a lot going on with these Tamahiris and the people that they know. Who knows if they got it in for him? Now, he went against Tamahiri, and he reckoned that he met he, David Tamahiri met Harris in the 1980s because uh, David Tamahiri, remember, was in the prison for the murder of, well, the manslaughter of that young lady. And then this guy here was also in the prison in 1983, yes, for the uh, murder of the two people of his cousin. So they were in prison at the same time. All right, and then this guy here come forward as a witness, and he would said, he said when David Tamahiri came to the prison, he was opening his big fat mouth and saying the police will never find the bodies and things like that, and described in detail how he had killed uh, the two tourists, and so he came forward as a witness. Is what he did. Oh, my heart's racing just talking about it. I just have to breathe for a minute because there's just so much to t This video is like the most shocking video that I'm probably ever going to make. What's going on in our country and the people that are in our parliament and around our parliament is just absolutely and utterly disgusting the people that, you know, Andrew Little are helping, Patsy Reddy are helping, um, our Governor-General helping a, a man that rapes a 62-year-old woman. Um, you know, I'm, it's hard for me to talk about because um, I'll end up in tears, so I'll try and move on. But it's important that you, the New Zealand public, understand about you know, John Tamahiri, Rawiri, Waititi, they're all family and they're trying to get rid of the treaty and these are the people that are telling you that if you go back to the 1865, um, the, 18, uh, the 1835 um, Declaration of Independence, if you go back to that, they will lead you. These are the people that want to lead you above the Queen who's never done anything wrong. She's been a good queen and she was under a lot of pressure. And um, these are the people that are saying, okay, we're gonna lead you New Zealand into freedom out of the British Commonwealth. We're gonna get rid of that treaty and we're gonna take care of you. And these are the people that are gonna take care of you in New Zealand. So think very carefully about it when you're thinking about supporting these people that wanna throw out our queen. You know, Whew. so anyway, witness C. Got to get my head straight here. Now, I want to just tell you about. Oh, I've lost one, have I? I have. Now, Arthur, Arthur Taylor. Okay. So, those are the people the criminals, okay? Now, this guy here is called Mason Jury. 
he's a psychologist or something and he's uh, um, you know he's a good guy he he hasn't he himself has done nothing wrong so let's make that clear but I just want to show you all the family connections that these filthy people have got and there's no evidence that their family connections have assisted them but when you look at what's going on you have to wonder about that but it's not their fault when a family member sometimes the family member just married into the family another family and they get the blame so we mustn't blame mason jury he's been a fine upstanding citizen all right but his brother is Eddie Jury, and Eddie Jury was on the Waitangi Tribunal when, in 2014, they um, announced that the Queen did not, uh, that the, the Maori did not relinquish sovereignty. And that's when all this big mess started, where they're saying throw out the Queen and, um, and bring in the 1835 um, Declaration of Independence and they all come from, it all starts from the Polynesian society of Ra Rawiri Waititi's uncle from the Polynesian society and several others also, another guy called Hugh that was uh, involved with retranslating the treaty comes from the Polynesian society. So they, these are all the characters that are trying to get rid of our uh, Treaty of Waitangi that uh, that says the Queen is the um, the Queen will govern New Zealand forever. So Eddie Jury is a High Court judge, and Mason Jury is his brother. Now, um, now let's see. This is Awirangi. Jury Tamahiri, and she is, I'm not sure if she's still the wife, but she's the first wife of John Tamahiri, and she, Awi Rangi, also, I just need to point out that she also has done nothing wrong, except for she married into that family. So she's done nothing wrong either, a fine, upstanding citizen. And she, Ari Rangi Jury is the daughter of Mason Jury. Okay? And so Ari Rangi Jury is, is the niece of Eddie Jury, the High Court. Judge. Now you know all these judges all know each other. So you just have to wonder when I go on with the story, it's really important that you remember. So Mason Jury is Awiri Awirangi's father, and Eddie Jury, the High Court judge, is her uncle, and she is married to John Tamahiri. And John Tamahiri is the brother of David Tamahiri, who goes around raping 62-year-old women and 47-year-old women and murdering 23-year-old girls. And, and he was accused, of course. So... Along comes this guy, Arthur, Arthur Taylor. Now, Arthur Taylor, where are we up to? Arthur Taylor, he was convicted of 185 offences. So, hang on, there's witness C, he's out. Kochi Harris, the murderer. Okay, so what happened was Kochi, um, uh, Kochi uh, went as a witness and then 
several years later, in 2017, I think it was, he suddenly come forward. They must have tricked him, I think. He suddenly came forward and he said, oh, no, I lied. He said, I didn't hear nothing. And they, they turned on the poor bugger. What happened was, after he said that he had lied, okay, what happened was David's lawyer, Murray Gibson, his lawyer of 26 years, commissioned him, Arthur Taylor, a convicted criminal of 152 kidnapping, firearms, drugs, offences, commissioned him to take a private case to the court against, um, against Roberto for lying. Now, why, why didn't the, the lawyer do it himself? Why didn't anybody want to touch this? Why did they push him up front? This guy here, who wasn't even a lawyer, he was a jailhouse lawyer, and he's been going to court. Now, I'll just tell you something interesting about him. He is the guy that went to the court for Jacinda Ardern, if you remember Jacinda Ardern, she wanted to bring in Jacinda Ardern and um, Golritz Garaman. They wanted to bring back prison voting. And the court ruled that they couldn't because they said it went against the Bill of Rights. And they got, and he took the case to court because Section 4 of the Bill of Rights says that they cannot override, the judges can't override um, uh, uh, Acts of Parliament. And so they, they lost the case and this is how Jacinda Ardern won the case to bring back voting in the prisons. It was through him. You know, these are the people that Jacinda Ardern is associating with. Now, he's the one that did that. And then in 2017, 2017 or 2018, he comes forward and he said, he recants and he said, I lied about David Tamahiri. And then, and then David Tamahiri's lawyer commissioned Arthur, to Arthur Taylor to make a citizen's prosecution against him for perjury, all right? And when he brought the case, this guy here was prosecuted and he was given eight years in prison for perjury. And then his name's Roberto. Then the Roberto turned around and said, oh, shit. He said, the only reason I said that was because his family was being threatened. His family was being threatened and he was also being threatened in prison. So the reason why he came forward and said that he had lied was because his family and him were being threatened. But after he came forward and uh, confessed and said, after he came forward and said, I lied about David Tamahiri, then this guy double-crossed him. David, then David Tamahiri's lawyer got, Dave, got um, Arthur Taylor to make a citizen's prosecution against Roberto. So Roberto got screwed all around. Basically, they said to Roberto, David Tamahiri, Tamahiri and his thugs said to Roberto, if you, you better come forward and say that you lied. And so this poor guy here, well, he's not, he is a, I mean, he is a murderer and a, and a fucking whatever he does. But anyway, he comes forward and he says, I lied about David Tamahiri, and then, and then he gets bamboozled because 
Then they turn around. He comes back with David Tamahiri's lawyer and he prosecutes Roberto and Roberto gets eight years. And so poor Roberto got screwed by everybody, <laughs> didn't they? And then, now, so, I just have to always lose my bits of paper, don't I? Now, let's see, Arthur, here, okay, I've got it. Now, Arthur, I'll just put those down here. And the judge that prosecuted and gave him eight years for perjury, by the way, was Judge Christine Futter. And I haven't researched her yet, but I wonder if we'll find some family connections there. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me, but anyway, these are the people that Jacinda Ardern is hanging out with. Now, he, um, he was not, Arthur Taylor was not due to be released, released until 2022. But funnily enough, in 2018, he was released just in time to take him to court, you see. Now, the people that he hangs out with, Arthur Taylor was good friends with a man called Graham Burton. Graham Burton was also a murderer. He murdered Paul Anderson, stabbed him to death. He was released in 2006. In 1992, Graham Burton stabbed Paul Anderson to death. He was a nightclub bouncer. And Graham Burton was angry because Paul Anderson stopped him getting in the nightclub or something. So he went back and stabbed him to death. And then he was released. In 1992, he was released in 2006. So eight, eight, 14 years he did. And then he was released. And when he was released in 2007, Graham Burton went and killed. He broke into the home and he killed Carl Kuchenbecker in a home invasion. Seems like these Tamahiris and the, all these guys, the home invasions, they're all going to people's houses, just going to people's houses and killing them. And so he, he, in 2007, he killed Carl. Then in 2008, he stabbed Dwayne Marsh through the heart, in the shoulders and in the arms and legs. Well, these are the kind of friends that Arthur Taylor's got in the prison. And they escaped together. He escaped together with Graham Burton and they ended up on a Chinese yacht, some very rich, wealthy estate. And he got caught and he got put back to prison. So these are the people that he's hanging around. And yet, Golritz Garaman and... Um, and Jacinda Ardern are getting people like this to go to the courts to fight legislation, to fight against our Bill of Rights, to allow prisoners to vote. <laughs> now, whenever he wins the case, the state has to refund him all of his expenses. Well, he can charge lawyering expenses, even though he's not a fucking lawyer. He's a fucking criminal. And there he is fighting in our courts, supported by our government. I mean, it's just disgusting. It's really disgusting that what our no flies on her, Jacinda Ardern, Golritz Garaman are up to with all these fucking criminals. And um, anyway, so apparently he's made about over $100,000 fighting legal cases in court for the fucking government. That's, that's not right. Got to move on because there's lots more. It, it doesn't even end there. There's lots more. It just gets worse and worse and worse. 
Now, so in 2000, now, in 2019, or actually 2020, David Tamahiri petitioned Jacinda Ardern for a pardon because of his prosecution by the judge. He petitioned just now, this guy here, the rapist of a 62 year old woman, rapist of a 47 year old woman. And he, he's, he's, he, you know, when he goes to court, he's not going to court to, he, he's out of jail, but he's on like, a, um, he's on a lifetime parole. That means if he even smokes a joint, he goes back to prison for the rest of his life. And you see this guy here, raped a 62 year old woman, raped a 47 year old woman, murdered, manslaughter murdered a 23 year old. And he had the, um, the car and the belongings and he was in the area of the two people, tourists that were murdered, these two here. But when he goes to the court, they're not gonna hear all that. All they're gonna hear is that part of his case rested on his te on Roberto's testimony and that Roberto just got prosecuted for it and sent to prison for eight years. It was a very high sentence. I mean, how many perjury cases have you heard of in New Zealand? I mean, you never really hear of it. I, if anyone's heard of them. So this is the one that I've heard. And eight years he got was a pretty stiff sentence, wasn't it? And I'm just wondering, and then suddenly he's petitioning. Now, Jacinda Ardern, if this guy gets his lifetime parole sentence taken, and he goes and rapes another 62-year-old woman, he goes and murders another 23-year-old child. I'm saying to you, Jacinda Ardern, you have got the blood on your hands because this guy is no innocent person. He fucking isn't. And this is who, now, Patsy Reddy, on the advice of Andrew Little, has ordered the judge to take his case, to reopen his case, but they're not gonna hear about the 42, the 62 year old woman. They're not gonna hear about the 47 year old um, rape victim that he raped for six solid fucking hours. They're not gonna hear about the 23 year old young woman that he murdered. No, all they're gonna hear about is this guy here got eight years for perjury. That's all. Helen Reddy, our Governor General of New Zealand, in right of the Queen, and, and Jacinda Ardern, our Prime Minister, and Andrew Little fighting for this fucking dirty, filthy, fucking old, elderly woman rapist. I doesn't even end there. Fucking hell, it just, what's going on, New Zealand? What is going on? Karen Brewer, I've heard all these stories, Karen Brewer, and all these things that they say, movie stars, and there's rape, and there's murder, and there's drugs, and they having sex with the kids and doing, and I didn't, and the politicians, and I didn't believe it. I was saying, nah, this is a con conspiracy theory. These are conspiracy theories. It can't be true. And here we are, our own Governor General. And who's to know? Because there's, the, the, there's um, Eddie Jewelry, who's the brother of Mason Jewelry, who is the father of Awina Jewelry, who is the wife of John Tamahiri, who is the brother of David Tamahiri. It just fucking gets worse. And then Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda Ardern with um 
with with that one that with Arthur Taylor sending him to get the present voters' rights. What's going on here, New Zealand? Fucking wake up to our parliament, the cesspit, the cesspit of New Zealand parliament is it's just disgusting. Not ending there. Now Rawiri Waititi. Here's Rawiri Waititi. He wants to get rid of the treaty and go back to the 1835 Declaration of Independence. And he says that the New Zealand Maori are going to lead New Zealand into victory. No more Queen. Get out the Queen and they're going to take care of us. They're going to take care of us. These guys here are all going to fucking take care of us. I am scared to death. Scared to death if they got the Queen out. Now, his wife, fucking hell, look at her. That's his wife. Her name is, her name used to be Christine Tamihiri. She's the daughter of John. Where's John? Here's John. Reckon he's a fucking Maori. Look at him, he's red. He's got a red face. Reckon he's a Maori. And Rawiri Waititi here in our parliament is married to uh, Christine Tamahiri. Now she's white too. She went and she's changed her name to Curry and she's put a tattoo on her face and her lips too maybe and apparently that makes her a New Zealand Maori. She says, so you're apolitical. You know, the wife of the person in Parliament is talking like this on media saying, what the fuck does that even mean? Dedicated to all Maori leaders out there. I mean, how intimidating are these people to the New Zealand public? I mean, I feel sorry for the New Zealand Maori because they dare not, they dare not speak out because these freaks will have their fucking murderers. They're murderer mates. They're murderer mates. And they're fucking kidnapping mates to go there. And they're all scared. The New Zealand public are scared because of these people. Now, she she's the daughter of um, John Tamahiri. So it's all in the family. It gets worse. There's the daughter of him. No, I'm not finished with him. So she's a freak aware as well. I mean, you know, these people are getting paid hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to represent New Zealand. I mean, why would our, why would the Queen, why would the world's leaders want to even meet them? To rip, I mean, you'd be scared, wouldn't you? You'd be scared that your your fucking grandmother's going to be raped, or your or your or your or your or your auntie's going to be murdered and kidnapped. You dare not say anything out of place. It gets worse. Now, Rawiri Waititi is the brother of Taika Waititi. And Taika White Taika Waititi is a famous don't make noise. He's a famous, famous movie star in America. So he's a I I'm not trusting that he's as innocent. He looks very, very, very homosexual. He's married, but all of his pictures are very homosexual orientated so I'm really wondering about you Taika Waititi and so here's the brother of Rawiri Waititi he's in the movie business he's a famous famous movie but movie star these are all the characters you see 
we sh we're going to make a movie. You, you couldn't even make a movie. You, you'd need to, I mean, we should make a movie. Now, John Tamahiri, in 2013, he and a guy called Willie Jackson, they got onto the radio talk show. And apparently there was this thing, there was this, this thing called Roast Busters. Roast Busters was a bunch of guys that got very young. These men, they were men. The media called them young guys, the lads. They were men. 18 years old is a man. If you're old enough to vote, then you're a fucking man. And they were 18 years old. And what they were doing, these guys, was raping, gang raping, three to six guys at one time, gang raping children, New Zealand children, child girls, sometimes even boys, I've been told. And these girls were like, the media puts them at 13. But were they only 13 at the time it got to the media? Were they 11 and 12 at the time that they were actually raped? This is the question because they're calling these young girls women and they're calling the men guys, young guys. Young guys for the men that are 18 and women for the girls that are 12 and 13 years old. <laughs> Fucking disgusting. Now, Tamahiri, oh, lest we forget, oh shoot, we must not forget when we're talking about rape and murder of his brother, John Tamahiri was accused, accused of raping Winston Peter's cousin's daughter. Yes, he was accused and she apparently asked for compensation and he said, I ain't going to pay it, go and prove it. Well, how was she going to when you've got, you know, judges in the family? Not saying that he did anything, but I mean, he's around the courts, isn't he? And there are several of them around the courts. And so he said to the young lady, she came forward and she said, you know, I want to be compensated because New Zealand ACC has a law, you know, it's true. ACC has a law and if you are raped when you're a young child, um, you can go and claim compensation for that, all right? But you have to name the person that did it. That's what you have to do. And obviously the young lady wanted compensation. So she, rather than go through ACC, I imagine, I wonder, she came directly to him and she said, you know, you pay me. The payment that she wanted was, but he says is $50,000, but who knows? Who knows? But anyway, he said, never mind, you go and prosecute. I don't care. Prove it. Well, it's very hard to prove rape. Now, when he got on this radio show about these men that were um, raping these young ladies, they were getting them drunk and they were still in school. They got them drunk, raped them, and then they posted the rapes on social media. They had a Facebook account called Roastbusters and they posted it on social media. It's just absolutely sickening what these guys have done and the police knew about it for more than two years. The police had been watching the site for two years and when it came to light to the public because the young girls had been coming forward and the police had been basically telling them to piss off. Yes and then finally, the police started to investigate. Finally, the police said that we were just 
we were watching the site and we were getting, we were collecting the evidence, they reckon, and they reckon they didn't do anything about it for two years. Now, altogether, there were more than 100 girls involved with this. 100 young girls. So, John Tamahiri got on the radio show with a guy called Willie Nelson. And he was saying, and he was interviewing a girl, a, a young lady that was a friend of one of the victims. And he was saying, oh, do you think they asked for it? Do you think that they ask for it if they think they can go out drinking, um, uh, drinking with people and not get raped? And he was saying, you know, maybe it's the way that they dress. Maybe they came back for more. Maybe they asked for it, he was saying. And then what happened was the radio show kind of sacked them. They lost all of their advertising. And suddenly he was sorry suddenly said, oh, yeah, it was a horrible thing to say. And, of course, the young girls, these children, children were the victims, is what he said. But fuck off. He only did it because he was going to lose his job. Now he's back in Parliament, you see, because he is the father of this lovely piece of work, ah! who is the wife of... This guy here, I've got nothing against you, Wariri. Your, your past has been wiped clean. Who knows about you? But anyway, I'm not saying anything about you. I've, I've tried to find stuff on you, but it's all hidden away mysteriously. So we have to say that you are the innocent person. It's not your fault. All right? So... As far as I know, Rawiri's done nothing wrong, except for just recently, a few days ago, he released a video saying that we should throw out the Queen. Don't worry about the Queen, he says, because we're going to lead you. We're going to take care of you. Yeah, me and my fucking, me and my fucking brother, me and my brother David, we're going to take care of you, is what he says. How can I be scared if I was you, New Zealand? Now, um, this roast busters, what they used to say, um, they used to get them drunk. When the, the children, because, you know, below 16, having sex with a child under 16 is already rape. Even if they, they, even if they consent. He said they consented. But if you're 12 years old, you're 13 years old, you can't, you don't have the right to consent. And when an 18-year-old is gang raping, raping you now, apparently there was, at some points, there were six men gang raping a drunken 13-year-old child. And one of the children was actually virginal. Her mother says, and they gang raped her. That was her first experience. You know, we're talking about what we're talking about here: sixty-two-year-old woman being raped, and twelve and thirteen-year-old children being gang raped for their first sexual experience by six guys or three guys. I don't fucking care how many it is. You dirty, filthy bastards! What the hell is going on with you, Jacinda and Dern? Is this what we have to put up with in New Zealand's parliament? You should be, all of you should be fucking ashamed of yourself with your silence. I'm sickened. Now, the girls, when they went to the police, the police said to them, um, um, the police said to them, well, maybe your skirt was too short. Maybe you consented while you were drunk, but you didn't realise it, 13 years old. Yeah. And um, the, one of the girls said that when she went to the police station, what they forced her to do was reenact the whole thing with dolls. So they gave her a bunch of men dolls and, they, and a doll that represented her. And she had to demonstrate to the police, you know, Lord knows how many of these fucking fat, dirty males were standing around and she had to demonstrate to them how six guys 
had gang raped her while she lay there. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that experience? And then they told her to go home. Fuck. They told her to go home. Okay, I don't want to talk about that too much. Now, it just gets worse. Okay, I'll just keep that. Just have to breathe for a minute. Now, one of the guys that gang, ra gang raped 12 and 13 year old New Zealand children was this guy here called Joseph Lavelle Parker. And um, he said, you know, he said, I don't know if I've written it down here. I wonder if I've written it down. Oh, yeah. Now, what he said, now, he is an American. And he has, from what I understand, he has New Zealand nationality. And Joseph Lavelle Parker is currently in the United States. You see, when we've got all these foreigners in our parliament and when they commit crimes, they just fuck off back to their own country and leave our New Zealand people to, you know, deal with the horror of the mess that they've fucking left behind. Now, he's gone off to America and he's making videos and songs about these rapes that he committed against New Zealand children is what he's doing. Now, his father, now we can't say family members are at fault. His father is Anthony Parker. And all of these guys, all of these sexual abusers seem to be involved with suicide prevention groups. So he's involved with the suicide prevention groups. And I'm going to do a video on it another time. But sometimes I wonder, you know, um, I don't want to go on too long. It's a long video. So Joseph Lavelle, he's making, he's now making videos. Now, he, he, um, this is what he said. He said that um, he was, the, he he's the one that set up the Facebook page. And he encouraged child rape parties. And what he would do is he would uh, give the um, he would give the girls drugs and alcohol. He would get them at the school, and he would give them drugs and alcohol. And then they would set up this Facebook page where they raped the girls at the party. You know, you, you know what you like when you're a 12 year, you know, New Zealand girls, they're 12 years old, they're 13 years old, and they do sometimes go out and have a drink. They come from broken families and um, they go out and have a drink, but they don't fucking expect to be gang raped by six men and have it put up on a Facebook account. I mean, this is a serious, serious crime here. This is what he says. He says, um, he said he was a performing artist and he said he was celebrated he said he was celebrated like a performer that gets he get he said he gets like access to sinful treats which is what I was indulging in he said it was those treats that drove me to push the roast busters game so he would get hollywood treats for Doing the video on the Facebook, he was getting uh, sinful treats from Hollywood. Now, who knows what they are, we, but we only just know that his father is a Hollywood movie star and has never spoken out against what his son did to New Zealand child girls, child girls. And then we also know that Wairiri's brother, who's actually friends, yeah, they're all friends. 
And that's, um, what's his name? Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi. And so when, when he's talking about the Hollywood um, treats, the simple treats that he was getting from Hollywood for posting the rape of New Zealand children on his site, um, those are the kind of people that he's getting his treats from. It's fucking disgusting. It doesn't even end there. And then along comes, and this guy here was a pair. His name is Baraya Hales. Baraya Hales. And I actually, he's not, he's a New Zealand national. But he's not a New Zealander, which means that he is either the child of a refugee or a child of an immigrant. Now, his name is Baraya, B-E-R-A-I-A-H. And his father is a policeman. Ooh, a policeman, you know, judges... Prime Ministers, Governor Generals, all hanging around, rapists, murderers, what's going on? And so his father was a policeman and he, these are some of his sayings. On Facebook, somebody was asking him some questions and they said to Baraya, now I think he's Mexican, He's, this guy here is Mexican, actually, I think. But it's hard to research him because they hide it all. But on the Facebook page, the question was put to him, how would you get a girl? Meaning, how would you get to have sex with a girl? And his answer was chloroform. Chloroform. So these girls weren't only just drunk. They had chloroform. Where do you get chloroform from? Is that one of the tasty treats from Hollywood? Maybe some chloroform. Maybe there's some doctors in the family. Chloroform can't be that fucking easy to get. What is this? They asked him. They asked Baraya Hales, what is a saying that you say a lot? And this is the saying that he says a lot to the hundred girls. Go ahead. Call the cop. They can't unrape you. So that's what he's saying. And when these girls, these children, were going to the police station, that you might as well have just fucking raped them again. They were forced to get dolls and reenact the gang rape of themselves in front of God knows how many fucking police watching dirty bastards. And his father was a fucking police officer. Now, he says that as many as six men engaged in, he called it, they called it group sex. It wasn't fucking group sex. This is how the media and the police were calling it, group sex. These girls, they were saying to these girls that they were having group sex. It wasn't fucking group sex. It was gang rape. And there were up to six men at a time gang raping 12 and 13 year old children. This is fucking disgusting. And then asked why he never talked about that, in that incident. He replied, I would go to jail. You don't fucking go to jail when you've got police that are your father, do you? When you've got you know, people like John Tamahiri and um, and Willie, ne Willie Jackson calling on radio programs and saying, oh, the girls probably asked for t to have six men climb on top of them and fucking rape them when they were virgins. Well, one of them was a virgin. Who cares if they're a virgin? Just because you're not a virgin doesn't mean you deserve to be raped, chloroformed and made drunk by six you know, 18-year-old men, and then to have it posted all over fucking Facebook just because his father is a policeman. So I don't know where he is now, but 
he they are trying to gain celebrity status in America for the raping of our New Zealand children. Yep. And these are and these are the people that he stands up for and Jacinda Ardern's fucking mate. So I'm disgusted. Now there was a there was a huge protest in New Zealand about not prosecuting these two men. They were men, they were 18. So along comes Karen Malthus, Malthus. I don't think she's a New Zealander either. She has New Zealand nationality. She's not a New Zealander as far as I know. They hide all these things, but it just says that she has New Zealand nationality, which usually means they're not a New Zealander. And she opened a thing called Operation Clover. And um, Operation Clover was a 12-month investigation. There were 20 staff run by Karen Malthus and Andy Lovelock. What they fucking see Lovelock? Just, just getting a man to use with the name Lovelock was more or less was... Like, this was a fucking joke to them. Why did they get a, call, a guy called Andy, Randy Andy Lovelock? I think, you know, the case was doomed from the start. When you've got celebrity fathers, yeah, you've got, you've got celebrity fathers that have got celebrity mates that have got celebrity brothers that have got celebrity wives that have celebrity fathers that also have more celebrity fathers well it was it was not looking good so there were 20 staff a hundred yeah clover Ch oh And Sarah, God bless her, has said, if you look at Clover, the C stands for child and the lover stands for child lover. You fucking dirty, filthy, the pits of the fucking Satanists. I can't even, I, just speaking out for you girls, if you ever get to see Kate Floss, these filthy bastards should be strung up and whipped. They'd probably fucking enjoy it. Dirty bastards doing that. 20 staff and they called it, the, they called it Operation Clover, which stands for Child Lover. And they put in a guy called Andy, Randy Andy Lovelock, fucking dirty bastards. Now, there were 110 girls. They're very sick. The whole lot. But our government, when you have someone like Jacinda Ardern and Patsy Reddy, these people are all related. And Patsy Reddy asking for a asking for a pardon for him to get him off parole. I'm sickened. And then, anyway, there were 20 staff on it from this um, this lady here, Karen Malthus, which there's more stories to come about her, but I don't have time today. There were 110 girls followed up from the online activities. 44 of them were followed up for a formal interview, which means it could mean that 44 of them were um, deemed to be at risk, probably girls that had been maybe raped. 25, they call them underage girls, you see, but they're fucking not. They're children. They're children. Call them what they are. They are children. They're not underage anything. They're children. And they're 25, 
25 of the parents and caregivers. Now, caregivers means that most likely that these girls were in state care because they were with caregivers, which means that they weren't with their parents. And 25 of their parents and caregivers declined to formally complain. That means 25 children were raped and they didn't complain and they could have been 11 years old, they could have been 12 years old. Apparently, when they went down to the, um, the police, the police were asking them, don't you think that you might have consented? And the police were saying to them, you do realise how horrendous this trial is going to be? And they all dropped the charges. And But one lady did speak out. She said that her daughter had to move schools two times because of the bullying. Now, he talked about the bullying of his family and he talked about the bullying of himself in prison from these fucking Tamahiris. Yeah. And so this poor young child, she, her mother said that she was, sadly, she was a virgin and I don't like to talk about you, dear, but I have to tell you a story. She was a virgin and she was raped from by three to six men. That was her first experience. And when she went to report it, she got bullied at the school and she had to leave two schools to get away with it, to get away from it. And her life was just destroyed. And um, when then, of course, and now there were, oh, there were 35 men they call them males in the media, but let's call them men. There were 35 men that were persons of interest. But of those 35, only five of them were considered for prosecution, which is a real shame because those 35 would have been engaged with the Facebook page. And that still makes them just as fucking guilty. When you're doing a Facebook page, sharing that kind of, filth, then you're just as guilty. But they weren't prosecuted, only five. In Karen Mathis's conclusion, this is what she said. It's sick. Nobody was prosecuted and she recognised that alcohol was a factor and she called them males and females. You have to listen to the wording here. What she should have called them was men and children, child girls, they weren't females, they were child girls and men. They did, she says, she tried to make out like the men didn't understand what they were doing. She said, they did not understand how consent can be ambiguous when alcohol is involved. So she's trying to make out that these men that gang raped, uh, children didn't really understand that since the children were had alcohol in their body that if they consented it might not have been a, a good consent because they were drunk these girls were fucking 12 and 13 year old, years old karen fucking Malthus. these men were 18 years old not only that they weren't just getting drunk and going off to um they weren't just getting drunk and going off to have sex with a girl that was maybe a little bit underage. No, they were fucking getting girl drunk that they pre-planned on Facebook. They led them to the premises. They got them drunk. They gang raped them and then they reposted that on fucking Facebook. Now that's not just, oh, I didn't know that it's not consent when they're drunk. Karen Malthus. You need to get your head examined, lady. And she said, this is her recommendation. So they dropped the charges. Nobody was prosecuted. Nobody of these 44 girls, nobody was prosecuted. It was recommended for more sex education with the emphasis on consent issues when linked to alcohol. 
So what they want to do is teach New Zealand children about alcohol in the schools and how to have sex and to be careful about when you have sex. When, when a man rapes you, if you go and get drunk, and a man rapes you, it might be your fault because you might be unknowingly consenting because you drank a few glasses of beer. You fucking freak, Karen Malthus. You should be strung up right up with the rest of them. Well, I'm not allowed to say that. No, you shouldn't be. You should be... It's not good what you did. The main character... So Joseph, I've done him. So in the end, they were left with um, so there were seven victims of rape and unlawful. In the end, they were left with seven victims that were prepared to go to court, but they didn't get their day in court. The police did not prosecute, and uh, one of those police is the father of Beriah Hales. And not to mention that one of them, and I'm assuming it was him, was recommended and had psychological counselling um, paid for by us because it is thought that he is at such high risk of committing these crimes again. Thank God, I hope he's in America. Let them go and fucking rape. If you're going to promote these guys, America, America, if you're going to promote these on your music videos for raping little 12-year-old New Zealand children, if you're going to promote that, I hope he's in America raping. Well, no, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. But, I mean, America... I'm calling out to America, when you promote this man that raped 12 and 13-year-old children, you're a sick society. These are the foreigners that are coming to our country and New Zealand will not deport them. And um, so I'm just going to finish up now. Um, uh, the, uh, the 25... But I did just want to say the 25 children, I just want to say uh, to her, where is she? Karen, Karen Malthus. I just want to say to her, I can't find her, she's gone, that um, here she is. Oh no, can't find her. Anyway. I wanted to say to Karen Malthus that uh, when a 12-year-old child is brought to you and you have evidence by a Facebook video and when a 12 or a 13-year-old says to you, I don't want to prosecute, it's not up to the parents. It's not up to the caregivers. If they, um, totally lost her, it's not up to the caregivers if they prosecute or not. It's up to the police because when a 13-year-old child is not allowed to give consent and even if she did consent, if that action is put onto a computer for other people to see and skited about. That's a crime against children. And it's not up to the parents if they want to prosecute or not. It's not up to the caregivers if they want to prosecute or not. It's up to the police to prosecute, to take it out of their hands. Now, when a man beats a woman, they made a law. Oh, just she's just gone. When a man beats a woman, they made it the law that it's not up to the woman if she prosecutes or not because it's a crime against the state. When you rape somebody, you rape a 13-year-old child, 
It is a crime against constitutions and bills of rights and international laws. And it's not up to parents or anybody to say whether they want to prosecute or not. It's up to the police to take that evidence. Now, this site was open for two years and Karen Mathias decided not to prosecute. Oh, I've just totally lost her picture. But anyway, that's the end of the video for today. But I want you to keep all these people in mind, all their family members. And when they're saying to you, let's get rid of the Queen, let's get rid of the treaty, and we're going to take care of you, New Zealanders. I think you need to think really carefully about the people. When you've got the Governor General, Helen Reddy, ordering a, a retrial for this man who raped a 62-year-old woman, raped a 47-year-old woman over a six-hour period. And then she's ordering for him to get a retrial. The Governor-General in New Zealand. Um, I'm just saying all these people are friends and family and they're all friends and Jacinda Ardern is friends with them but there's no flies on her. So it's been a very sad video for me to make today and um, uh, everybody just think about all these victims. All right, peace out. Um, save the Queen, God save the Queen, um, God save New Zealand because deal, and they took Christ out of Parliament. It's no wonder that they did because they could not bear, none of them, they could not bear to put their hand on the Bible because their hand would have burned. They put their hand on the Bible in Parliament, their hand would have probably fucking burned because God wouldn't have wouldn't have been happy. He would have been sad. So they took God's name out of the Bible. They said, "You out of the Parliament. You no longer need to swear on the Bible. Now you know why New Zealand. They can't swear allegiance on the Bible because their hands would have burned on the Bible." God would have seen through them and he does see through them.